What I love most about mountain biking is its ability to push us. As someone who's come from trauma, as someone who has felt limited by uh, just what society might, those limits that society might place on me as being a woman, being a woman of color, uh, mountain biking, I feel like there are no limits. There is an ability to be able to push myself every single day. To be able to read my body and my mind, somewhat of my, my spirit, that's, that's mountain biking. Every day we're going out there and we're pushing ourselves, learning more about ourselves. When we decide, today I'm gonna to push a little bit harder and just see. And when we have those accomplishments that are so huge and we get to celebrate, for me it's just, it's a way of me healing. So you press this to make it easier, mm -hmm. this one to make it harder. Yeah. Okay, all right, yep. And then I'll tell you when to hit this button. Okay. It was with Outdoor Afro that I really experimented with this idea of BIPOC rides in Boulder County. And from there, I saw so much engagement with the community and BIPOC folks. They want to shred <laughs> and they exist here in Boulder. And I was so overwhelmed with this passion of wanting to create a safe space for them to do exactly that. And from there, it was all about calling in all my connections and calling in everyone I could to make sure that these group rides was something that was just as much of a cornerstone in the mountain biking community in Boulder as white folks getting out and shredding every day. I first met Brooke in the mountains. It was a BIPOC initiative ride. Outdoor Afros was the platform we met through Meetup but that day on the trail was when I really first met Brooke. In person, she was leading the ride. I could feel her nervousness, but I could also feel her passion of being on the trail with all of us. She is paving the way for future riders and future people to get into mountain biking because she's showing us it's possible. And that's what is so powerful about Brooke Gowdy is she's doing the work now. My favorite moments of these BIPOC rides is what happens after the ride is done. The community really comes together and we feel so comfortable with one another. The way we are able to celebrate um, all the accomplishments that have happened on the ride, so much fun. Um, from the moment that we are in the parking lot together and we're just cutting up, <laughs> to after the ride is done and we're having drinks together and really celebrating in a way that you know that you can be your authentic self. Representation matters because there have been so many times that I've seen young children of color on bikes. I think back about how nice it would have been for me to have been able to see myself in this sport when I was a kid. You know, black folks ride bikes. <laughs> That's not the problem here. I have rode bikes when I was a kid. I grew up riding a bike. But I never saw myself on a mountain bike. I never saw myself cruising these beautiful trails that belong to us. And I can't go back and be the young girl who now gets to see it. But I surely can go forward and be the representation for the young girls like me, the young girls of color, to know that these trails belong to them, that this community of mountain biking, that that belongs to us too. <laughs> In 20 years, I hope I'm not sitting here still talking about representation matters. I hope that it's an idea that everyone understands, that we acknowledge and understand barriers and that we, all folks, white folks, black folks, brown folks, are out there 
working our hardest to remove those barriers. That's backcountry red right there. <laughs> yeah, you're right. I do look good. There you go. <laughs>